I'm Brett, this is Caleb, we're from Smart Shelters. We're down here in Southland, just out of Winton at Ingram Farms. The structures that Darren's put in here are two 24 metres wide by 115 metres long. So he can bring his cows in here in May and winter right through. He's also set it up so he's got enough feed face so he can use it in dry spells and as a feed pad throughout the season when needed, also for weather events and so forth, and to increase his lactation on the shoulders of the season. At the moment it's uh, nine in the morning. Uh, one of Darren's guys is ripping the bedding, big deep ripper with the crumber on the back. So he's aerating the bedding helping the uh, effluent mix in with, with, the, with the bedding and then introducing more oxygen into the sawdust bedding. The steam is a side effect of the microbial bacterial activity. The bugs down there are, are composting the carbon in the bedding. The side effect of that microbial activity is heat. That heat evaporates all the urine and all the moisture out of the bedding, keeping it nice and dry and clean. And it's of critical importance to have a structure like Smart Shelters with a big high arch which gives you a lot of air volume and the half round shape that the Smart Shelter has is a natural wind tunnel and it's drawing the moisture right out of it. So Caleb's dug a bit of a hole here in the middle of the bedding, just got a thermometer to check how we're going for heat. You want your heat to be above 30, that means you're getting rid of moisture. Right now we've got 49 Nine. degrees. So that's absolutely gone for it. That's why you're seeing so much steam coming out. The microbial activity is just really working. It's got all the balance of the right cow numbers, the right shavings, the right moisture level. Bedding life is usually around two years. Depends on how often you're using the barn, of course, through weather events, if it's a drought, using it for a feed pad. The saving in your wintering feed bill easily pays for the bedding, but that said, the bedding in here has got a huge value as fertiliser, putting it outside on crops or on pasture. The roof of the structure here is about nine metres high, so it gives you plenty of space for driving trucks through. We designed the poles to be about three metres high so that you can drive big machinery down each side and you've got no concerns. This is a central feeding lane, six or seven metres between the structures. Concrete from side to side, feeds out really well out of the mixer wagon. The cows have got loads of feed face, over 900 millimetres per cow. The header rail here is protruding out far enough so it's not rubbing and they can reach their ration well. So the economics of these barn systems, the dry cows here are eating virtually half of what they eat in a uh, wintering system in a crop. We often see farmers achieving a four to six year ROI on these projects. Your main benefits from that obviously are heavily reduced wintering costs, 100% feed utilisation, so no wastage of feed, better cow health, and no dips in production throughout the season. As well as a really good ROI, we often get farmers telling us about the other benefits, the intangibles. Just seeing their cows in really good condition, seeing them clean through winter with good condition, they're warm and dry, are the biggest thing is the peace of mind and just knowing that you can look after your cows, whatever the weather is, and look after your pasture, look after your feed source the best you can. Any more questions you've got, just comment below, give us a ring, send us an email, get in touch. We'd love to come out and see if you've got one of these projects on the go. I do the North Island, Caleb does the South Island. We'd be happy to come out, take you through the benefits on your farm, on with your cows, or arrange for you to come and see one of these barns on a farm near you guys so you can have a look for yourselves. We're doing a whole lot more of these videos so subscribe, like and keep in touch.